Hello and welcome in the episode 3 of Robin tutorial series. Before starting this episode, I'd like to go and have a little overview of episode 1 and 2. So in episode 1, we have gone over what MMM are and how they can help our businesses. We introduced Robin, which is Facebook's latest MMM uh, library, and we saw how Robin works and actually how it compares to other solutions in the market. Then, in episode 2, we installed everything we needed from R to our studio, installed library, Robin, installed all the other libraries we needed, such as Nevergrad and stuff like that. And now we are just ready to go with episode 3, uh, in which we are going to um, go through the demo file, which Robin provides under documentation. We are going to see each and every line of code, how it works, and basically we are going to explain them so that you will be able to then take this demo script, modify it, and run on your data. So, let's get started. The first thing I like to do is start as a, as a fresh start. So, in the last episode we installed several stuff, and as I said in the, in the previous episode, there, there, was so, there were some commands which don't require to be executed every time. So basically, a lot of stuff was just a first-time setup uh, command. For this reason, I like to start this episode as if we are uh, already we have already used Robin in the past, and we are just going with a, a clean uh, project. So to do that, just go for session, restart our session. We will wait it for it to. Uh, to conclude, so session is restarted, and then we like to go on the top right here on this uh, on this little thing, uh, and go for removing objects from our environment, and click yes. Then we'll go and clean the console as well. Okay. At this point, what do we want to do? Is start with library Robin and set seed one two three. Library Robin, we already know it, it just uh, importing the library. Set seed is a command uh, used in R uh, to basically... Okay, in R you can, for instance, generate a set of random numbers. However, uh, this is some concept more related to how computers work. Uh, the random numbers generated are never really random because a computer can't generate uh, real random numbers. It has to be to, to have a starting point. And this is called a seed in computer science. So what we do here is set a seed, which in, in this case is one to three. You can leave it one to three or you can change it to be uh, whatever you, you like. And by setting always the exact same seed, what you get is that you'll be able to in case you, for instance, have to generate some random numbers, always get the same random numbers. And this is something that uh, helps uh, during the code to, to always have um, some sort of similar uh, outputs in case you run the model several times on the same data uh, without changing anything. So we just leave it as it is, we execute it, and then we move forward to uh, these other two, um, two options. These two options as well, you have to just run them as they are. Uh, you don't mind about changing them, you just you will run them every time. And this allows your computer to work with multicore. So uh, generally, uh, today's computers have from four to eight cores in general. They, then you may have more, you may have less, but this simply allows our studio to work with multicore, which uh, provides you with better performances. So the, the code is going to execute in lower time. After this, we are going to import reticulate and then use the virtual environment. Oh, sorry, I passed. Yes, use virtual environment and reticulate. And then we'll go over with the real code. So the first thing we want to do in this uh, demo script and in general uh, using GAR is importing our data. Here, as you can see, if you download the demo, demo script uh, by yourself, you'll go, you're going to have two different um, data sets imported. The first is DT Simulated Weekly, and the second is Profit Holidays. In particular, Simulated Weekly uh, is going to be the one with your business data. So this is something that you are going to change whenever you are going to, to run it on your data, but simply data uh, parenthesis DT simulated weekly is going to import a file called called DT simulated weekly. 
Here you don't see any path, any extensions to the file, because simply this is already inside Robin. So uh, Robin, when you do library Robin, uh, brings with it this file, which can be imported as it is uh, just for um, testing purposes. However, uh, we can see, we will see it a little later, uh, whenever you have to import your file, you are going to specify the path to the file. So we just executed this and we imported the DT Simulator Weekly, which is automatically set into a variable called DT Simulator Weekly. And if we run this one option, you can see that it prints in our console the head. So the, the first few lines of this file, just to show us. However, there's a, a really better way if you want to navigate through your um, data set in R, uh, which basically, as you can see here on the column on the right, there is this environment voice in which you will see all the data, all the variables that you have defined in your code. So here there is our uh, DT simulator weekly variable. And if we click on the right side here on the table, you can see the data set directly inside R. This is something you can do, of course, with numbers or Excel or Google Sheets in case you have a CSV file. But this is a cool way because you can navigate through your variables, see everything that is inside. And in general, this is the exact format you want your data set to be in order to work for Robin. The first thing you need to have in your data set is a date column. The date column must be exactly in this format. So year, dash month dash day this is the only format accepted for robin by, for data to to be used and you don't really uh, it's not important whether the data is uh, daily weekly or monthly this is the format you want to use in this case as you can see uh, we have weekly data so we have the, the week starting on the 20th 23rd of november 2015 then the 30th uh, of november 2015 and so on so each row represents the data from that exact, exact week. You can have this, like I said, daily, so you're going to have one row per day, or you can have it this monthly, so you're going to have one row per month. In this case, we have one row per week, and this is weekly data. After the date, we are going to have our output variable. So this is the variable that we want to create our model on. We want our model to describe this variable so that our model can tell us how to maximize this variable. In this case, it's revenue. Robin can work with either revenue or conversions. So the number of sales that you are doing. Here we have revenue, like I said, and then we have the media variables. So the media variables really uh, comprehend even variables that are not properly media channels. So as you see here, there is TV, there is out of home uh, spend, uh, which in general consider the media variables as the one with a spend correlated. So we are spending on TV, we are spending on out of home, we are spending on print, as well as search and, uh, and Facebook, as you can see here. And this will be our spend variables. The uh, underscore as s means that it, this is a spend variable. So um, there could be two things happening here. You may have some sort of channels in which you can't really get an, uh, a correlated variable for your spending. So let's say TV. You know you are spending uh, $160,000. Um, However, you don't know how many people saw your ad on TV. You don't know uh, how many, uh, what's the, um, how many clicks maybe that ad generated and stuff like that. So for a channel like TV, you are going to only have the spend. And this is fine, you can have only the spend. However, there are channels like uh, search for, for instance, Google or Facebook, where you not only know how much you are spending, so search as and Facebook as, but you can know uh, how those channels are performing in terms of impression or clicks. So we have Facebook the underscore I, which is Facebook impression, and search clicks, which is Facebook clicks. Uh, sorry, it's Google clicks, of course, or um, being clicks in general, search clicks. And this is uh, a nice thing because if you can provide Robin with not only the spend, but the amount of impressions correlated or the amount of clicks correlated, that's an additional, an optional, but additional um, cool thing that can help Robin better model your business. So if you can't, just go for the spend. 
If you can add something like impressions or click, go for it. Don't add stuff like how many sales that channel uh, broke to you because that's exactly why we are modeling for. If you take how many sales Facebook attributed himself, itself, that's not going to be real, 100% of the, of the cases. So uh, that's not what we are looking for. We are looking for ground truth variables such as clicks or impressions, which are not, uh, let's say, cookie related. So in short, we need a date, which is year, month, and day format. We need a, a, an output variable, which can either be revenue or conversions. Then we need our spending for, uh, our, for all our channels. And in case we can, something like impressions or clicks. Facebook uh, uh, suggests, suggests to use impressions instead of clicks, as impressions is a, a, be- a metric that better represent, um, better correlate uh, with spend by their, um, their opinion and their um, experience, let's say. However, uh, I, I would suggest to, to see and test what works best for your business. We have seen cases where channels work best in Robin using impressions and other cases where they work best using clicks. So just test this out and, and see what works for you. Not only that, but we can add some more variables as well. We can add um, competitor sales, for instance. So we can see when our competitor is actually uh, doing a lot more sales, what does this mean for us? Are we going to sell less or maybe we are going to sell more? Because when the competitor sales goes up, actually may, he may be spending a lot more. So he may be driving some traffic to us as well or stuff like that. So uh, here we have um, how much our competitor uh, is performing in terms, of, in terms of sales week per week. And then we have uh, two more variables, which is basically newsletter and events. Events is like an on and off event. So over here, you see there is no event all the way down uh, here, for instance, where in this day we had an event one. Then we have an event two over here and stuff like that. And the the newsletter is basically how much traffic is driven by, uh, by the newsletter. So... You want something like this. It doesn't have to be exactly like this. Maybe you want to have your competitor sales. Maybe you will have more organic variables. Maybe you want to have contextual variables or you will have more. Uh, What's important is just uh, the the format of uh, of this file. And basically the fact that you must have a date in this format, uh, either a revenue or conversion column. And then all the others are pretty much optional based on your needs. So we have imported this data set. We have seen how this data data set is created, is um, formatted, sorry. We are going to do the same for DT Profit Holidays. And this uh, as well comes packed in Robin. And this is really cool because you don't really have to to change this whenever we are going to run Robin for yourself. You already have profit inside, you have this file inside. And if we take a look at this, you can see that basically uh, by country, so this is Ar- Argentina. Uh, if we go down here, we have uh, probably Czech Republic uh, and stuff like that for pretty much each country. Uh, you can see that we have uh, holidays from the 1995 to approximately, I believe, the 2050 or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. And day by day, you have the the actual holiday. So. We will see in the code later, we can specify the country in which we are selling and Robin will automatically get all the holidays for our specific country from this file and we'll see if any days in our, uh, in our model uh, there was an holiday, how it impacted our sales and stuff like that. So we got the, uh, the, Robin data, the profit data set as well. And now we just set the Robin object. This is basically where Robin is going to save our output. So this this is going to be important whenever we have to refresh our model, for instance, because once we do all the modeling phase, we can save our outputs to an RDS file. RDS is basically an extension for the R programming language. And by using this RDS file, we are going to be able to take the already trained model and use it to to another refresh and and do more stuff on that. So this is important. You just have to set a path which makes sense for your computer. 
so I may put this in desktop Robin uh, slash tutorial slash my Robin RDS. I'm going to execute this as well. And then there is uh, one of the very first commands you do for Robin itself, which is Robin inputs. This command is really important because it's basically where you set all of your variables and you tell Robin exactly what to do with each of them. So the first two things are DT input and DT holidays. To the holidays, we just pass the profit holidays and to the input, we have to pass the variable containing our dataset. As we said earlier, um, this is the, the simulated dataset and it's okay. Uh, it works just like this, but we wanted to show you exactly, I'm going to zoom again, maybe uh, that's, that's going to, uh, to help a little. So uh, what we want to do actually, probably in the future, is going to use our own CSV. So uh, in order to import your CSV, you can just ignore these two, don't, don't execute them since those are going to be useless. And then instead of doing this line, if you want to import your own CSV, you can do something like this. Data.table, double semicolon, f red, and then the path to your, to your CSV file on your uh, computer. This of course may vary from computer to computer, but that's basically going to pass to Robin your own CSV. Now, for this video, we are going with the Robin dataset. And uh, we are going to see all the function, and then we are going to execute it all at once. Then we start with setting the variables. So we are going to tell which variable is the date. As you can see here in the simulated week weekly, our date column is actually date all in capital letters. This is really important because it's case sensitive. So here it's all in capital letters, here it's all in capital letters. Then it's asking for the dependent variable, which is the output variable, the one that we want to model on. And in our case, it's called revenue, all uh, in uh, small. So revenue, and then it's the, uh, we need to tell Robin which type of variable is our dependent variable. As you can see here, it's only either revenue or conversion. This doesn't, I mean, this is not correlated to how you call your variable in your CSV file. This is always only revenue or conversion. It's like a keyword for Robin to understand whether it's modeling revenue, so something like $2,000, or it's um, modeling conversion, so something like 200 sales. And in our case, it's still revenue as we are uh, modeling our revenue. Then we moved on to the profit part. In the profit part, you have mainly three things. We'll go from this one, which is the easiest to understand, and it's the country in which you are uh, modeling. The thing with Robin is, as of today, you can only choose one country at once. So if you are doing, if you are selling in multiple countries, you may want to either um, ignore the holidays so that you don't have imprecise information because maybe you are selling uh, both in USA and Europe and all these places have different holidays. And if you say, okay, use US only um, holidays, that's not going to be real because the sales coming from Europe uh, are going to be influenced in a different way from their holidays. So you may consider to either ignore the holidays part or just uh, do one model per each country. Anyway, let's say uh, I'm from Italy, so I want to, to do this on IT uh, countries, uh, IT holidays, sorry. And then we are going to specify which of the Robin variables we want to model. In this case, you will find by default trend, season, and holiday. But there is a fourth one we can use, which is weekday. Weekday allows Robin, uh, allows Robin to use profit in order to understand if there is any day of the week in which you sell more, in which you sell less, and so on. In this case, we are going to use weekly data. So you, you can't really use weekday because there, there is not a, a daily uh, subset of data. So we're going to use only trend, season, and holiday. And, the, and we will see in the next episode what this will output in terms of modeling. And then you are going to specify the signs of this variable. What does this mean? Whenever you model something, you are basically finding a correlation between an output variable, which is our revenue, and several input variables, such as trend, season, and holiday. And 
Decorrelation can be either positive, so uh, whenever there is an holiday, I sell more, or negative, that whenever there is an holiday, I sell less. So this is basically the sign, which is positive, negative, or default. If we are not sure whether our business is seasonal, whether holidays are actually driving more sales and stuff like that, we can just leave default. It's okay. However, uh, if we know, for instance, that holidays typically uh, increase our sales a lot because maybe uh, we are selling stuff that is good to give to other people. So uh, we may want to just tell Robin, look, don't mind about uh, finding whether this is a positive, this has a positive or negative impact. I'm telling you it is a positive, a positive impact, sorry. Uh, just tell me how much, is in, how, many, how much impact is actually this variable having. So you are just going to make it easier for Robin because he doesn't have to guess uh, and to, to find out by itself. So it's even going to be a little uh, faster in the process. And you're going to have uh, already a, an output that makes more sense to you. So we can, for instance, write, write positive here. And this is going to force holidays to have a positive impact. If you are not sure, just leave the fault. If you are sure that holidays have a positive or a negative impact, you can specify positive or negative. One thing to note that this is uh, this works by position. So you see here on, on profit bars, I'm passing three variables, which is trend, season and holiday. Then on profit signs, I have three times the, the sign. So I have default, default, positive. What this means is that trend, which is the first one, is default, is the first default. Then season is still default, this is the second default. But then holiday, which is the third variable, as a sign of positive, as a positive sign, basically. And this is important. You can have, uh, you can have this, you can have it like this because then Robin is going to give you an error and is going to tell you, you, you give, you gave me three variables, but only one sign and that's not working. You need to have the same length and actually the same position. So if you want to force the season to be, let me get back to this. Okay. Let's say you want to force the season to be negative. For instance, you are going to change this. This way you're forcing the season. If you do, if you go like that, like this, you are not forcing the season. You are forcing the trend to be negative. Anyway, uh, for this example, we are going to leave everything as default. And then we're going to move on to context variables. Context variables, like we said, is something that we don't really have, um, we may not really have in control over. So, no, sorry, this is not really precise because we can use price as a context variable. So how our uh, product prices vary over time can be a context variable for Robin. Context variable are just other factor, factors that may be influencing our sales, but typically uh, are not factors in which we are spending money. So it's either uh, uh, outside factors like competitor sales, maybe temperature, as you can see here, or unemployment rate or how the... Uh, the COVID is affecting our country and stuff like that. But that can be uh, something like events. If you are having events in that time of the year, maybe what price we are selling our product or if you are, uh, if we are launching a promotion, that's everything goes into the, this context bar. Sorry. And the context bar have the sign as well. So just like before, same length, same position, we leave these both as default because we want to know how these are having impact on our sales. And then we get to the um, probably most interesting part for most marketers, which is the paid media bars. In this case, there can be, uh, okay, so besides the signs, the signs work exactly as the other two. So you, have, you need to have the same amount of signs in the same order. You can all either have default, positive or negative. In this case, we are using positive because we are expecting all the paid media parts to have a positive impact. It's unrealistic that I'm spending money on Facebook and I'm having a negative impact. So uh, it may be close to zero for some cases, but it's always positive. So I'm just forcing these ones to be all positive. Besides from that, one thing to note here is that we have paid media parts and paid media spends. In the spends, row, you have to exactly specify all the spend variables. So TV spend, out of home spend, print spend, Facebook spend, search spend. Uh, 
On the media arts is where impressions or clicks, if there are, come in hand. Because here, in case you don't have any, so let's say TV doesn't have any kind of clicks or impressions, you can just specify the spend again. So you are going to have TV spend, TV spend, out of home spend, out of home spend, print spend, print spend. In the case of Facebook, as we seen early, earlier over here, we have the impressions generated week over week by uh, this Facebook spend. And what we can do is telling, okay, this is what I was spending on Facebook. This is the amount of impression I was generating from Facebook. And the same goes for search. So this is the search spend. This is the search clicks. You may have all like this because maybe you don't have uh, clicks. Maybe you don't have anything. So you may have only spend variables on both sides or you may have uh, all the, all, let's say, output variables for each channel. So you may have uh, print impression and stuff like that, or you may have it mixed. So some only have spam, some have impressions or clicks. This is really up to you and the uh, kind of variables that you have. But in general, this is what um, the paid media variables part uh, means. And then last, there is the organic variables. So this can either be a newsletter, maybe organic session, uh, everything that basically uh, drives you... Uh, sales drives you more people to your website, more uh, uh, clicks, more impression, but doesn't have a spend correlated. I'm not spending money to send out a newsletter. I'm using an already uh, ready list of email in which I'm just sending an email. So there is no correlated spend. And this is what an organic variables is meant to be. Then uh, for some context variables, you uh, may have it to be basically, or even organic variables, yeah, as you can see here, uh, you may have them to be factorial, so basically just an on-off. It's either uh, uh, there is an event or the, there is an event or there isn't. And in that case, maybe, as we can see here, uh, you have, for instance, when there is an event, there is uh, event 1, but the next time it's not going to be event 1, it is going to be event 2. So this is basically a factor, uh, factorial uh, uh, variable. And in case you have one, you just have to specify it here. After you have already set the variable in the correct place, so events goes in context, uh, maybe you can have something else in organic. But if you have one or multiple context variables, you are just going to specify them here and you're going to be comma, uh, quotes, and var2, and so on. So now that we have set all of our variables, we are just going to set a couple parameters for the model. The first one is cores. So it's the number of cores that you want your machine to use in order to compute uh, all the um, all the Robin uh, execution. And this really depends on your local machine. But like we said in a previous episode, usually you are going to have from four to eight cores. And basically you can take it um, like this. Let's say you have uh, a computer with six cores. In case you want running, Robin to run in the background without having an impact on your computer performances while you are doing other stuff, you may want to set like two or four cores out of your total six cores. Uh, or let's say instead you, you just don't mind about using your PC. Maybe you are going to, to leave Robin run overnight so you can set all your cores and that's going to be uh, a lot faster, of course. In this case, we are going to leave uh, four cores here. And then there is the modeling window, the rolling window, sorry, for Robin. And this is another cool feature of Robin because let's say we have uh, like four years of historical data. Our business over those four years might have changed a lot. So maybe three years ago, whenever I spent money on Facebook, I could have had uh, a really uh, higher return in terms, of, um, in terms of sales. And that may not be the case as of today, where Facebook is a lot more saturated channel. Many other companies, maybe competitors, are using Facebook as a media channel. So that really could have changed over time. What we can do with Robin is actually give Robin all our historical data 
to to be able to model and train the model and better understand seasonality and stuff like that. But then we can tell Robin, look, out of the, those four years of data, uh, the last six months, for instance, better describe my business, better describe my activity on social media and other paid channels. So uh, whenever you're going to, to model the impact that each channel is having on my business, focus on this on this window of time, basically. So we are going to, to give him four years of data, but we are going to tell you, look, uh, focus on the, the period between 23rd November 2016 and 22nd uh, August of 2018, because these two years, more or less, are the ones that better describe my activity on paid channels and, and how those paid channels relate to my, to my business. This is something that is completely optional. So in case you don't want to, to use this, you want to use your whole data set, or maybe you, you want to just set the starting window, not the end, you just can comment the other, um, the other part or both parts, and this is going to work the same. And one quick note, since we are saying this for this one, it's the same for, for the others because maybe you don't want to be to use profit at all. So you can just comment out all of this and this is going to work fine or maybe the same for context variables. Maybe you don't have any context variables. Just comment out, ignore this part of code and go over. So we set our early window. We say to Robin, look at these two years are the best describing our business. Like, like we said, you are... Maybe you don't know, maybe your business has less data, so they all describe well. Just use it, ignore the, the rolling window, but that's a really cool feature once you get uh, how you can use it to, to, yourself, to, to your advantage, let's say. Then we have the, I'm sorry, uh, the, um, the ad stock part. So Robin basically allows you to uh, calculate the ad stock in two different ways in two different ways, actually three uh, from the latest uh, updates. So there is geometric, Webull CDF or Webull PDF. Without going into too many details, um, in, in a really short way, we can say that geometric is a faster, easier way to calculate our ad stock. So you may want to use geometric in order to, to have a, a faster run of Robin and just get an idea of how this is working. But then you may want to use Webull PDF for, for instance, your final model because Webull is a more complex algorithm which better describes um, how the, the K rate, how the, the ad stock works over time in the real world. In the end, we are going to, to set how many iterations we want Robin to run. Because like we said earlier, uh, Robin does a lot of optimization by itself. And how does it does it? It basically takes a range in which it can optimize its cyber parameters. And then it does a ton of different kind of um, iterations in which it tries all different kind of uh, combinations of other parameters. So we are basically telling Robin how many of these iterations we want Robin to execute. And in this case, we are going for 200 iteration, 2,000 iterations, sorry, over five trials, which are basically five different scenarios, let's say. So uh, this is a good starting point. You may want to do a little more maybe for a more complex uh, model with a lot of data. Or maybe you can do a little less in case you want to, a, quick, uh, a quick model to run just to give you an idea to tune something and then re-execute. And then about these two inst uh, to these two um, line of codes here, basically you can set, you can leave it as they are, always leave it there because are, are needed, but just leave it as it is. This is um, specifying which algorithm you want Nevergrad to use to optimize a parameter, which is a little uh, complex here to explain. And this is something about the, the intercept, which is basically if I spend zero on every channel, how much sales I'm going to, uh, to generate. We specify that it's not negative because if we stop doing marketing, that's not gonna uh, make us like go minus five sales. Uh, so we just put this constraint, uh, but then 
we are going to let him uh, to let him do his work. So everything is ready. We are going to to get from these closing parentheses down here all the way to input collect Robin inputs, and we are going to run this. So as you can see in the console, it says that Windows Start is adapted to the closest date contained in the input data because we have weekly data, so we the the demo data may have missed the exact day of start of the of the week and it's just going from the 23rd to the 21st which is the closer than 22nd to the 20, 20th and then it's saying that hyperparameters are not provided yet because that's something that we are going to do right now so uh, next off we can do these are optional uh, optional let's say plots we can do it's not really necessary because you are going to have these exact same plots in the uh, final output. So for now, we leave them to, to false. But in case you want to see your plots while Robin is actually running and, um, and executing stuff, you can set this to, to true. And you are going to see here, if you click on plots, they will be generated while Robin is running. Like I said, we are going to leave this some false since it's, it will allow us to, to have better performances on Robin execution. And we are going to execute these two lines of code as well. Then there is, uh, there is some, in this demo file, there are a lot of comments which actually help you uh, understand what other kind of stuff you can do with the, with the code. We are not going to deep into that. You can read it by yourself. You find some more specification on the documentation ex uh, as well. And we are just going to see how to, to run Robin from start to finish. So, Line 201, we are going to, to execute this command. And basically what it does is going to, to tell us exactly what all our hyperparameters are. Because what we do is we give Robin a set of variables. We tell Robin, okay, we want to generate the ad stock via Geometric or Weibo. We want to, uh, to do these kind of transformations. And then Robin is going to, to need a set of fiber parameters. But like we said in the episode one, if you remember, uh, we may not know which parameters Robin does need. And Robin actually tells us. So by using this line, what Robin is doing, sorry for the background noise of my uh, dog. Um, what Robin is doing here is actually telling us the list of fiber parameters that T wants us to uh, to pass to them. So as you can see, it's Facebook impression alphas, Facebook impression gammas, Facebook impression tethers, uh, newsletter, newsletter, uh, out of home, etc., etc. Et You're going to see uh, from the variables you passed some param parameters. There may be three to four for each variable. Uh, but as you can see here in the demo, we already have this set up. Otherwise, in case, uh, for instance, imagine you have Bing as well, what you may have to do here is, for instance, copy the Facebook part and go like this. So I have the Bing here, Bing, and Bing. Here, what we are setting, we are setting the list of our hyperparameters, which are basically for each channel we pass to Robin, and we may have more hyperparameters per channel. And the thing here is we are setting boundaries because these hyperparameters need to be optimized and Robin needs to know uh, what's the range in which these hyperparameters exist. This is something a little complex to, to explain here. It's really about uh, Nevergrad and hyperparameter optimization and all the logic behind. But what it's important to know is that you can uh, use these boundaries you find here as a general guide. And you can do some tests, you can uh, actually enlarge here, maybe you can set this to go from zero to three uh, so that you, you start testing by yourself, you start getting an idea of what the optimal boundaries are for your channels. This is really something that uh, works really well if you test out some different boundaries. And in general, uh, an important thing to say is that it's better not to give your negative uh, hyperparameters as those may give you a negative impact from, this, uh, from these variables, but these are actually uh, media variables. So we want them to, be, to have a positive impact. So 
We just copy our list of other parameters. We select our list of other parameters. We execute that. As you can see, it went smooth. And then we go for this line, input collect Robin inputs. We're going to execute this. And as you can see, no error. So this is going strong. We go over here to our uh, Robin run function, which is basically uh, telling Robin, okay, uh, the inputs are coming from the input collect variable and we don't want uh, like plots in the meantime. We're just going to use to see the, the last ones. So execute these lines as well. And I'm going to stop it right here for me. So uh, what is important is that you see these first lines. So whenever you, you execute this part of the code, this is actually the, the main part where we are building our model. We are going to, uh, to get our outputs, our one-pager model, which we are going to, to see in the next episode. But what's important here is that you see this first output. So we are going to see that your input data has 208 weeks in total from the 23rd November of 2015 to 11th November of 2019. And the initial model is built on a rolling window of 92 weeks, which is basically the, um, uh, the two years that we gave Robin to, to work on. Then it's saying that we use geometrical stocking with 18 upper parameters and a full ridge regression on four cores. It's basically like a summary of what we have done so far. And then it says that we are uh, running five trials with 2,000 iterations per trial using two points DE, which is our ne never grad algorithm. And then you will see the loader showing uh, basically how this is proceeding, uh, the percentage for each trial and stuff like that. So uh, this may take some time, depending on the size of your uh, data set and the power of your computer and many different uh, factors. So we will stop the video right here. Let this run for some time, the time required for, uh, for, for your case, basically. And in the next video, we are going to analyze our Robin outputs and see exactly uh, what the outputs are, what they mean, what kind of insights we can uh, get from the outputs, and then how we can use those outputs to uh, generate our budget allocator. Thank you so much for watching. Hope uh, it was helpful and see you in the next one. Bye.